mode a measure of central tendency. Mode word is taken from French word la mode, which means trend or fashion. In terms of data, mode is the value that is most prevalent. Like, if we talk about these observations, then here 12 is the most frequent. In this way, we can say that 12 is most prevalent among this group of observations. That is, 12 is the mode of these observations. Now look here. Here, the marks obtained by the children in a competitive examination are given. There are a large number of observations here, so it will not be easy to find the mode by looking at the numbers. For convenience, we can arrange the data in a frequency distribution table in which we write the number and show it by its tally marks and the number of times it has appeared in all observations. The count of tally marks tells us the frequency of that number in observations. Can we identify a mode based on frequency? Think, think. Absolutely right. The frequency of an observation tells us how many times the observation has occurred in all the observations. So, the observation that has the highest frequency will be the most frequent in the observation group that is the most prevalent. Therefore, observations with maximum frequency can be called mood. As here, 35 observations have come at most 10 times, so it is mood. Here, mood 35 tells us that the maximum number of children have scored 35 marks. Suppose there were 6 more children who got 32 marks. Then, in this case, the number of children who got 32 marks would be 10, which would be equal to the number of children scoring 35 marks. In this way, there would be 2 observations in the group that had the same frequency and the highest. In this case, we would have received two modes. Hence, modes can be more than one. Now, let's understand the characteristics of mode. The mode is not affected by peak values of the data. Look at these two groups of data. Here, in the second group, the peak value is 698, which is extremely large, the remaining numbers being the same. If we find the mean of each group, we see that due to extreme value 698 in the other group, the changes are taking place in the mean. If we find the mode of these two groups, then it is 22.4. You can see that mode is more suitable here than the mean to represent the central tendency. The mode can be used for both quantitative and qualitative data. We have seen examples of quantitative data. Let's look at the example of qualitative data. Suppose a family wants to buy a car. Following are the opinions of the family members regarding the color of the car. Their mode is black color. So, with the help of mode, here will help in making decisions related to color of the car. There are some collections of data in which all observations are repeated the same way or there are two or more modes in the data. In such a situation, the mode is not useful measurement. For example, if the colors of the car were selected by the members of the house in the following way, would it help us to make decisions related to color of the car? Think, think. Here each color is repeated twice, so choosing one color will not be easy. The mode is commonly used by the ready-made garment industry and shoe industry. Mode helps them to decide which size or measurement should be produced in greater numbers. So, today we learnt about mode, a measure of central tendency. In the next video, 
we will see some interesting examples on the central tendency of data mean median and mode